Thanksgiving masses offered by Tania and Tyron DeMello, Dalton Rodrigo, and Rosie Rocha for favors received. For the intentions of John Verghese on his birthday, Mrs. Victor and Nirmala, Aldrin Dias on his 52nd birthday, Penelope Singh on her birthday and for good health, Alina Lobo on her 6th birthday, Rebello family for good health, and Adeline de Souza on her birthday. We also pray for Brother Mark, who celebrates his birthday today, that God may guide him in discerning his call as a redemptorist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. God certainly has a plan for each one of us, and he realizes it in his own way. Our life and liturgy become meaningful when we realize that God is in control of everything and thank God for it. On the contrary, when we expect God to center only around our lives and count others' blessings as something to envy, our lives become miserable. The liturgy today invites us to stop feeling jealous or envious of others' blessings and count the blessings in our own lives. Today, we as Redemptorists also celebrate the feast of our blessed Caspar Stazin Stangasinger, a Redemptorist who devoted his service in the formation of youngsters who willed to be religious in the congregation. Asking for his intercession that we take care of each other and help one another in forming our lives according to the commandments of God and stop shedding traces of envy and start counting God's blessings. My dear brothers and sisters, in order to participate in this Eucharist in a worthy manner, let us acknowledge our own sinfulness and ask for God's pardon and mercy. Let us all together say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who manifests your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises as to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading. God surprises his people by using elders outside the chosen ones to prophesy. A reading from the book of Numbers. In those days, the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was in him and put it on 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied. But they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp. One of them was named Eldad and the other Medad. And the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the reading will be... the Lord is perfect, it revives the soul. The decrees of the Lord are steadfast, they give wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord bring gladness and joy to the heart. The fear of the Lord is pure, abiding forever. The judgments of the Lord are true, they are all of them just. Precepts of the Lord bring gladness and joy to the heart. So in them your servant finds instruction. Great reward is in their keeping. But who can detect their own errors? From hidden faults acquit me. The precepts of the Lord bring gladness and joy to the From presumption restrain your servant, may it not rule over me, then shall I be blameless, clean from grave sin. The precepts of the Lord bring gladness and joy to the heart. Second reading. St. James speaks of the importance of action more than words. In other words, he says that we must live out that faith because of the love. A reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep, and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded, and their corrosion will be evidence against you, and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure in the last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your field, which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you, 
and the criers of harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous person. He does not resist you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us prepare our hearts to hear the word of God. Your word, O Lord, is truth. Sanctify us in the truth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him, because he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not stop him. For no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon afterwards to speak evil of me. For the one who is not against us is for us. For truly I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will by no means lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones to believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung round his neck and he were thrown into the sea. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell. Where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, a Zen master, while advising his students, said to them, anything that is too much can become harmful. Anything that is too much can become harmful. Be it love that can turn into possessiveness and even lose one's freedom. Or even be it anger that can turn into recklessness and even cause death. Be it even an ardent religious beliefs that can turn one person into a close-minded and even persecute others. My dear brothers and sisters, the readings of the day remind us not to be so stringent about what we follow, but to remain open to the Spirit. For God can proclaim His word. God can bring down His kingdom through anyone. He can appoint anyone to proclaim His word. 
And that is what the first reading tells us. When the 70 elders were chosen, there are two more, Eldad and Medad, who receive the Holy Spirit and start prophesying. They were not part of the chosen 70, and yet the Spirit descended upon them, reminding each one of us, those who we may feel we are not part in proclaiming the Word of God, all of us can be chosen by God to proclaim His Word. The same scenario continues in the Gospel. When the disciples of Jesus see one who is not among them casting out demons and working miracles, John comes to Jesus and says, we found someone who is doing miraculous work and we tried to stop him. Whereas the response of Jesus is very unthinkable. Jesus tells them, whoever is not against us is for us. Because all of us belong to the same group proclaiming the word of God, bringing the kingdom of God to each one of us. My dear brothers and sisters, may the greatest of the miracles that we do or as Jesus mentions, even a cup of water when someone gives to you because you are in the, come in the name of Christ, they will not lose their reward. And this is what St. James in his second letter says to us. Do not be unjust to your workers. Pay what is just to them. Pay what is due to them. Be just. Proclaim gospel in ways that you are called to. Whatever work you may be doing, be a witness, be a prophet and a messenger of his word. My dear brothers and sisters, in our churches, in our practice of faith, we may have experienced this. The readings remind and bring down to us to two points. The first thing, the insecurities we feel when someone else takes over our office. And this is what happened to the disciples. This is what happened to the elders when two of them extra were chosen, when two extra started prophesying. They felt insecure because they were not the chosen ones and yet they were doing the work that the chosen ones were supposed to be doing. My dear brothers and sisters, insecurities because someone else takes over our office and the second thing, the jealousies that can come because someone else is doing better than us. These two things, my dear brothers and sisters, have destroyed our unity, have destroyed our groups. If you look into our own parishes, we can see how our own insecurities or those in the offices feel so insecure when some new ideas when some new thoughts are put forward by other people, those who are not in the office. We sometimes tend to hold on to our office and say, I know better than others. Sometimes the programs that are planned, sometimes the working of the group divides, is spoiled, all because we feel insecure about someone else trying to take hold of our office. Secondly, my dear friends, is the jealousies that can come into our groups. If you look at our different associations, we may feel jealous about different people coming and becoming part of us. Could be because of the language barriers. We feel comfortable with the languages that we know. Anyone outside of it, we either feel insecure or we feel jealous that they might take over us. If it be in our own youth groups, if we see, my dear brothers and sisters, we can very, be, uh, very well become insecure when a new member joins, when new ideas are suggested by a new youth member who's not part of the group yet. We tend to keep them away only because we are comfortable in the group that is already there. We feel jealous of the ones who are doing better than us. We tend to keep them away and because of which the word is lost because of which the gospel values are lost, 
because of which the unity that the Lord wants to bring between us is lost. But what are we doing about it? Even though after knowing there are issues between various groups, even though after knowing that we are not yet fully united, what are we doing about it? How are we participating ourselves in the proclamation of the kingdom of God? How well do we give time in our own churches, in the different associations that are part of the churches, the different groups that are working for the betterment of different various poor people? Are we encouraging our own children to be part of these groups? The world says, make sure that your children are perfect. Make sure that your children are the greatest so that they have the best of the things. But my dear brothers and sisters, if, if our children had to give a glass of water to the needy, would that come to themselves from their own instincts, from their own generosity? Or would you have to force your children and say, go and give a cup of water to that person? How considerate are we becoming? How are we proclaiming the gospel? How are we training our children to proclaim the kingdom of God? My dear brothers and sisters, Pope Francis says, it is the ardent need of the society to incorporate within each one of ourselves the social responsibility towards one another. If we do not take care of one another, there can never be unity, there can never be the kingdom of God on earth. My dear brothers and sisters, as we prepare our children, as we prepare ourselves to proclaim the gospel, may we always remind ourselves of the insecurities that may come along the way. Because of someone else, may we never stop. Or also ask ourselves, are we jealous about someone else because of which there is division or because of which the good works that I could do are being stopped. If so, may we, by the grace of the Spirit, always continue to what God has called each one of us, for he does not restrict himself to send his Spirit upon not only those who are being chosen, but also those who are outside the chosen ones, you and me. May we pray for the Spirit's grace that all of us proclaim God's kingdom through our lives, especially keeping aside our insecurities and our jealousies for one another. May we all stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God hears the cries of his people, not because we are his favorites or that we deserve his attention, but simply because the heart of God is big enough to include everyone, realizing that we are children of this universally loving God. Let us bring before him our prayers and petitions. Our response will be, Hear us, Lord, for we are your children altogether. Hear, Hear us, us, Lord, Lord for, for we are, are your children. children. For our Pope, bishops and priests, that they may journey with the Church in hope to make this world a better place. 
we pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, Lord, Lord for, for we are, are your children. children. For Christians over the world, that we may realize that God is bigger than our imaginations and expectations and reach out to people irrespective of their faith, beliefs, culture and philosophies in life. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, Lord for, for we, we are, are your children. children. We pray for those whose lives are uncertain due to various kinds of problems that they face both spiritual and material, that God may be merciful to them and reach out through kind-hearted people. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, us, Lord, Lord for, for we, we are, are your children. children. For the sick and suffering in our families and community, that they may have experience healing and strength in these testing times. We pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, us, Lord, Lord for we are your children. For the souls of those loved ones we lost this year due to the pandemic and due to various other reasons, may they enjoy a place in the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, Lord, Lord for we, we are your children. Pause for a moment and pray for our personal petitions. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we bring before you those intentions which disturb us the most. Fulfill them according to your divine will. Bless us always with that peace and joy that we hope for in this life and in the life to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Oswald Gracious our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, Blessed Gaspar Stan Gessinger, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co as to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Him and in Him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual Communion Prayer My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Final hymn, God's Spirit is in my heart. Thank you.